Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of your favorite podcast. This is the best part of the week, baby, because, you know, we do it twice a week. It is Red Pill Tamales. I am Chingo Bling. What's up, everybody? I'm Rob GTV. Rob GTV in the building. And uh, Rob, I actually got to break a piñata this weekend. Yeah? Yeah, man. It was a kid's birthday party last night. It was going ham till like, we left. We ended up leaving like at 11. And all the kids were sugar-wasted. 11 p.m.? Yeah, one kid had, yeah. One kid had two slices of pizza. He was double fisting pizza. <laughs> uh, vale was going ham. And uh, they couldn't break the piñata all the way. And they're like, Andale chingo. Some of Mano came out. And I'm like, nah, man. I, come on, man. We ain't going to have the men. Hitting this piñata, man, but maybe they looked at me like as a like a like a big child. Yeah, but uh, you know, I held back a little bit. I know they were judging me on on my um how how well I was going. You know, the I technique. Kinda, yeah, I kind of held back a little bit. You ever had one of those stories like you see on like ridiculousness or something where like you see that completely go wrong and somebody gets hit in the nuts, somebody gets hit in the mm-hmm. head. You ever had that experience in real life? I'm always paranoid because it's always like the kids because they you know they rush when, in there. When you're in that coraje, yeah. yeah. When you're going hard. And uh, sometimes the kids let go of the, the stick. Yeah. Or the kids get up in there and try to get candy. Uh, it was a couple of close calls. We, uh, nobody needed stitches. But um, speaking of piñatas, remember they used to have them Trump piñatas? And people would beat them all the time? <laughs> yeah. What happens if you make a Biden piñata? Uh, these days, you will immediately get canceled. You'll probably get put on the list. Yeah. You're already on the list, but your, your name moves up. I know I'm on Shea Serrano's list. He said he was starting a list. Oh, that's he cute. He said he's going to put me on it. Yeah, that's real cute. Um, but yeah, uh, how many fans you think J-Lo lost by performing at his inaugural, by being on the list uh, uh, along with Garth Brooks? How many fans is Garth Brooks going to lose? Uh, I'm going to guess none. Really? Yeah. Just because the people that follow th- those two examples, for they're instance, they're not cancelers. Yeah, they're not. You can't cancel. Them. So you don't think there's any um, Cubans or Venezuelans that see J Lo like, yo, está, you know, estás promoviendo, el, you know, comunismo, eso socialismo, you know. Yeah, those. Whether they're think, whether they're right or wrong, I don't think they were fans originally. I think they abandoned ship a long time ago. Really? Yeah, I think you so. don't think. J Lo has any Cuban or Venezuelan fans? I'm sure she does. I actually saw A Rod last night on an episode of Shark Tank, and he was like really like chumming it up with the last two uh, people when they were from the Dominican Republic, right? Mm-hmm. And in, in my head, I actually thought about this. I was like, people that are were old fans of them and maybe like came to some awakening probably abandoned ship because they're like, man, you're just not jiving with what I know mm-hmm. facts should be. But performing for Biden's inauguration, if you're very anti Biden. My argument is, I'm not saying J Lo is ill advised. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying Garth Brooks is ill advised. They have they have the right to perform whoever, whenever, however. Yeah. But if you're anti Biden, you're probably gonna look at Garth Brooks and J Lo kind of funny. Yeah. The same way a lot of people are anti Trump and they're looking at me kind of funny. So my point is, it's a dangerous game to play when we're just canceling each other, based on you know it's one half of the country starting to cancel the other half and the other half canceling the other half yeah when you put it like that actually that, that makes a lot of sense more so even for garth brooks if you come to think of it <laughs> you know like for with his core base if you had to just guess yeah rural <laughs> yeah what his I mean, base voted for he, he's he's arguably like super mainstream and pretty pop and has been for a long time even though it's you know country music it's like he crossed over from country to just iconic mainstream pop even though he's kind of weird on camera he is goofy uh you know shit when you get that rich i guess i don't know it's, i guess the illusion kind of sets in like oh, i'm you know i think he just hopped on social media probably like six months ago to a year right uh-huh. is and that when tom's girl was coming? <laughs> yeah yeah he started making hey facebook How's maybe, it? maybe he's just like socially awkward i guess do you do you perform for stadiums like that and stay socially awkward no it might make you more because think about it if you're, let's just say, Justin Bieber, which is kind of a bad example because he was like a teenager, but let's just say Garth Brooks. Once, I mean, that's a lot of power, man. That's hitting the dopamine receptors in your head. Um, it's got to kind of weird you out. You have to keep the ego at bay because mm-hmm. I was doing, little, I was just doing nightclubs and shit. My ego was through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, you, were, you did of shows. Dates, yeah, College Station was sold out. Uh, both shows, even though people tried to cancel it, they called and complained. A couple media outlets, um, I even got a name and number of one of the gentlemen. So we wanted to call him today on air just to ask him why he's trying to take food out of my kids' mouths. We're going to do that on Patreon. That's going to be a Patreon exclusive. 
Uh, this is episode number... 20. Numero 20. And uh, shout out to all the patrons, man. We're 100% listener funded. If you want to join, I don't know what the name is. You can't say Chingo Army these right. days. That dude, I actually, I want to bring it up again because we had a pretty funny little thread on one of the, I think it was Instagram or YouTube where people were commenting suggestions. And I don't know if we said it. TIA? TIA, man. If you want to join a Tamale Intelligence Agency. I thought that was a good one. And then someone's like, it's Tamal, it's not Tamale. Yeah. Whatever. The TIA or the TIA. If you want to join TIA... Uh, hit us up, patreon.com <laughs> forward slash RPT, Red Pill Tamales. And uh, you can help keep us keep us going, keep us running, and uh, keep our freedom of speech. We're protected by this subscription business model. Yeah. Because as you guys know, big tech is very, um, you know, they got to be careful about what kind of speech and ideas and questions. And you're not allowed to question certain things. You're not allowed to say certain things. So that's how we're working around it. Thanks to you guys. We're already on episode 20. Um, on that point, actually, mm-hmm. I wanted to bring up, I was listening to somebody talk about how the left has, they have this way of uh, getting their followers to really rally behind these these causes, right? Whatever their mission, they think their mission is, or whatever their agendas are, or whatever, social justice, blah, 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 whatever. They they swarm to it, and they, whether it's uh, violence or, or whatever. Or like, can't we all need to cancel Chingo Bling, right. basically? Right, they yeah. gather, and they're like, we're about this. On the right, we're, I say we. Let's just say they, because we're we're in the middle, like we said. You know, we're we're leaning more one way than the other. But let's just say, most people on the right are very independent. So when it comes to rallying behind something like that, you're not going to see a bunch of conservatives rallying behind something one so stupid as canceling somebody or an organization or or uh, you know advertisers or whatever. So the point was, people that are now building these platforms on subscription models, which it's nothing new. We've been doing it for a long time. But you have, for instance, Crowder or Daily Wire or whatever. They've been doing it for a hot minute, so they have a big, which is great, a big following and a big subscription base. But compared to the left, from some of the numbers that I'd seen, and I didn't bring any of them, it's like you have platforms or people, public figures with half a million plus subscribers to their to their uh, subscription, you know, blogs, mm-hmm. uh, videos, whatever, podcast. Mm-hmm. So it, they're not worried about losing advertisers, but on the right, they're already getting silent so much, and it's already not. Uh, they're not prone to having a following like that because they're very independent. So the point they were making is. That's kind of where they're fucking up. Like, they didn't do this sooner. Like, they relied on advertisers heavily, like mm-hmm. like everybody does at first. But the left went to a subscription model earlier to try to get all those people to rally behind these who, causes. Who, who's an example of someone on the left that has a subscription model? I, uh, off the top of my head, I don't know, honestly. Um, I'd have to... Because they were talking about newspaper publica- publications in general. I think it was like... I think it might have been New York Times or Washington Post or something like that. And then they started talking about personalities as well. And that's a good point. Like, I always get those fucking New York Times, like, join for a dollar a week or whatever the da- it is. Support the daily. Yeah, podcast. yeah, or, or whatever it is. And, mm-hmm. okay, and I, it started to make sense. Like, yeah, that's right. Like, these people always congregate in these efforts, whereas on the right, they're very, like, you know, small government, leave me alone, independent thinkers. Well, according to the news, the right is a whole bunch of domestic terrorists. Yeah. Um, it's a big old MAGA army that supposedly Trump's now going to lead on January 20, uh, 21st, <laughs> which is all bullshit. And, um, but obviously it's going viral. It's trending because it's chisme. It's a lot of crema on the tacos and people eating it up because the news can't be the same thing today as it was yesterday. So it got to be the new theory, the new thing. So I, I hear you loud and clear. And that, that's a great question. Like, why is it that more conservative folks aren't uh what rallying together to cancel people and raise hell i mean according to what happened january 6th Mm -hmm. um you know that's how they paint the picture they're trying to conflate that anybody that voted for trump or was republican or whatever now equals domestic terrorism or white supremacy which is retarded. Yeah, it is. Bill Maher actually got flagged. Did you see that video? What did he what did he, he say? He, he made a point. I used to be a huge fan of Bill Maher when I was younger and, and knew less shit and was less open-minded. Yeah. Um, where he basically said, like, look, we can't conflate all the, let's say it was 4,000 uh, people that rioted and stormed the Capitol to the 74 million people and, and lumped them all into the same group of national terrorists and terrible people, blah, blah. And he's apparently been getting hammered on Twitter and online for even saying that. Well, shout out to Bill Maher for having a fucking brain and stating the obvious. You are dumb as a motherfucker, and I don't give a shit if it offends you or not. You are dumb as a motherfucker. If you have conflated that half the country are white supremacists, racist, domestic terrorists, you are stupid in the head and you need to get off the boo-boo. 
real shit. Because the news, let's not even call it news no more. Let's just call it the narratives. The narratives are feeding you an opinion. There's a shortage of Orale. aguas, pinches comerciales. Ya ves, all the patrons, <laughs> shout out to the patrons keeping us ad free. Uh, it's going to be funny how many fuck ups will happen throughout the life of this podcast with like. No, nah, that ain't no fuck up, man. That's that's serendipity right there. It bro. is, right? Uh, let's see if this was it. Let him because of what he's done. And no, I got to find it. Yeah, I think it was him on his show. This is him, somebody on CNN asking me a question. I think Bill Maher is secretly uh, conservative. You think so? Probably. Ooh. I mean, I was, well, he's like, I don't really keep up with everything he says, but I, I hear that a lot. That mm -hmm. even though he's on the left, he be saying shit that makes sense. Yeah, it meaning, does. Yeah. Meaning, what, like, for example, what you just said, you can't conflate what a few assholes did uh, and try to say half the country is racist. Right. I mean, it has more dangers than, than people think just off the surface level. Like, you can't just do that to have the country and expect it to not have ramifications in, in your regular everyday life. It's just retarded. That's kind of like how Biden is having to vet the National Guard people protecting the Capitol and just to see how they voted and just to see which way they lean. And uh, I think today they pulled aside two, two National Guard uh, they did? soldiers because supposedly they had some kind of ties to militias. Now, what does that mean? You got a cousin that's in a militia or... You retweeted some shit one time a long time ago that might have been a militia account. I don't know what the fuck ties to militias means. But if that's the case, Rob, you probably got ties to some crazy Mexicans. <laughs> you might be your cousin. Your cousin probably got pounds for the low yep. somewhere and and somehow, some way. Now you're a cartel. Yep. Um, so shout out to Bill Maher for, for using his platform to kind of, this how I see it, based on what he said. That is more unifying than what I've heard coming out of the left. You know For what I'm sure. saying? Because the left, they look like they want revenge right now. Even though they won, they won, their guy got elected, but they want revenge. They trying to shut everything down. And it's going to be fun keeping a close eye on how everything... Uh, again, I find this shit so fascinating and I think it's so crazily cool i know it sounds nerdy as fuck for you to also feel the same way and have the same interest in some of this stuff to talk about it on a platform on a podcast that we're get, like gaining followers and, and listeners by the day mm -hmm. because now we're like we're gonna ha and especially so we're wrapping up the, the second season here our second dozen pretty soon right oh, this yeah. is episode 20 season three our third dozen is gonna have a lot of vo new voices on the podcast we're gonna have a lot of guests we already mm -hmm. have some lined up from people who are experts when it comes to congress and people who have actually maybe been in the ice organization and other uh public figures that know how to mm -hmm. talk about this stuff so it'll be fun to see these perspectives where we'll be able to with a fine tooth comb go through like what's actually happening and what are all the things that biden said he was going to do in his administration which wasn't much he didn't really rally behind a lot of things but let's just he was in the basement he was and and, 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 and whatever happened to default fund the police because that was in the news i mean the narratives that was in the news all the time and i guess the left realized suburban moms and white liberals are kind of scared so they kind of toned it down and then you saw biden's leaked zoom call he's like hey, hey listen here you know it's a constitution i'm not gonna we can't defund the police man they've they've, they've killed us they've been killing us out there uh with this argument of defund the police mm. that shit went away so, as you were saying, season three. Yeah, season three, we're going to have a lot of guests. And it, it, I think it's going to, what it's going to do is also is help for some of the naysayers, who you know are still following, the naysayers and the people who are just completely closed minded and, and being, in a sense, simpletons about what we're talking about. And you don't know what you're talking about. Stay in your lane. The mm -hmm. idea and concept of telling anybody, whether they're a public figure or not, to stay in your lane and do what you know, do you think they knew? all the time, all their life, how to do X, Y, Z. It's like Colin Noir. People telling him, don't do car reviews because he's doing car reviews here and there. They're staying in your lane, talk about guns. He's like, at some point, I didn't know shit about guns. How the fuck did I educate myself on anything if I didn't go into that lane, right? So to leave that comment on anybody's social media, is just it's that's simple-mindedness at its best. Well, what I get a kick out of is how people like to throw the term conspiracy theory yeah. around in my comments when referring to me, but they won't fact check. Yeah. Like, I hear it all the time from all kinds of people, nobody in particular. And uh, you're more than welcome to fact check. You're more than welcome to say, hey, dude, at minute 13, you and Rob said this, but in reality, that's false. It's actually this because this, 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 here's the source. That's so welcomed, but doesn't happen. Not, not ever. It's just, you fucking traitor. You sold out on your gente because you didn't vote for the geezer from Delaware. 
Like, and, boy, you stupid as a motherfucker. You know how corny y'all sound? You know how lame y'all sound? Orale, don't nobody want to cancel you, vendido. You just like the attention and the drama. You're a, <laughs> you're a coconut. You want to be white. Okay, give me an example of how I want to be white. Why, bitch? Because I speak English? Because I'm a citizen? What the fuck? Why wear pants? Doesn't everybody wear pants? I don't get it. This hat? Motherfucker, Mexicans don't wear ball caps? What is it? What's, a, what's, what's white? I like how you purposely wore a, a soccer shirt. How dare you? You can't play soccer. You can't watch soccer. You know what? I think I think the Dynamo they were doing uh they were doing a whole lot of like kneeling and stuff. Oh, were they? they? weren't they doing like I think they were doing you know everybody though everybody was doing you know the BLM thing because obviously it's the empathetic thing to do. It's the right thing in terms of in terms of uh you know what the movement kind of stands for. But as, as we drawn the distinction you have the organization which many would argue is kind of fraudulent it's like okay what are y'all doing with all this money did y'all just give it to democrats and old white people yeah and have y'all done anything for black people have y'all built a park have y'all done any after school program like what have y'all done with all this blm money and that's that's where you know a lot of people critique uh you know the organization but anyway, with a good, I mean, with a good point, you know. Let me just reasoning. stop before somebody uh, tries to take away my freedom of speech and call me uh, a racist or some shit. <laughs> Let's go back to your shows, though. How did you feel on stage, and how was a uh, college station? Oh man, we did a Thursday night show. It was packed to the gills, sold out. And um, me personally, I felt like I was, you know, it was more of a warm up show. It was a little bit like knock off the rust, get comfortable with with the room, the setting, the ceilings, the stage, the mic, and then you make adjustments. For the next day, we came back Friday night. It was over capacity because the owner, he don't give a damn. The owner is like ex-special forces. And dude, he's like, Chingo, I respect you on and off the stage, brother. <laughs> cool. That's cool. He, dude, cool motherfucker named Keith out there in College Station. Beautiful venue. It's called Southern's. Amazing venue. The green room was amazing. They had my red wine. They had my tea. They had all the snacks. It was off the chain. Um, and he was telling me. He's like, hey, brother, uh, we're slammed in the kitchen, but I just want to come in here and holler at you. Um, he was saying that about the calls they received mm. from a couple media outlets and, 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 and pissed off individuals. They wanted to ask him, are you canceling Chingo Bling? He's like, why would I cancel Chingo Bling? They're like, because something, something about conspiracy theories and disinformation or some bullshit because motherfuckers can't fact check me. They refused to just pinpoint a particular thing that was said and say, this was false or this, you need to be stand corrected on this. It never happens. It's always just allegations, right? Right. So he says, fuck you. No, I ain't canceling shit, bitch. I'm a patriot, ho. And, um, and they were like, well, we're going to, we're going to, so you're not going to cancel. You're going to move forward with Chingo Bling at Southern's. And he's like, yeah. What are you gonna do about it? They're like, well, we're gonna we're gonna tell people we're gonna have to go public and we're gonna have to make a story about how you're not canceling this person. And he's like, please do. He's like, please, and tell all surrounding areas and make sure you tell Houston and Conroe and Navasota and and all surrounding areas that Chingo Bling is gonna be at Southern's. And uh, to all the Rasa that wants to cancel me, think about how lame you sound. Like, for example. Uh, I've been seeing a string of comments like I don't know the I hate Chingo Club must have had a meeting because now their new jab at me is ha ha bitch I'm glad Netflix pulled your show down idiots I'm glad Netflix pulled down your trash ass show and these are like females and shit yeah I'm glad Netflix <laughs> and then I gotta tell them I gotta say I still own it I licensed it to Netflix their license expired we pulled it down. It's a free agent, and I'm about to shop it around and get paid again. And I still own it. And then I'll license it again after that expires. Again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Because I'm the type of motherfucker that promotes ownership. So you're trying to go up against somebody who still owns their shit that was on Netflix. So you are a brown person trying to celebrate and jab at another brown person that made it on Netflix and managed to still own their shit and licensed it and put an expiration date. Netflix, you have this up until. After that, it's back to me and I can give it to Amazon or somebody else. But people are so fucking simple-minded that they want to celebrate a, what they think is a loss to a brown man. They think I got kicked off of Netflix. 
and they're celebrating it. That's so dumb. Who's the racist now? That's so dumb. Boy, you lame as a motherfucker. Uh, you know who else did that with licensing recently? Joe Rogan licensed his show for three years to Spotify. After three years, and you can uh-huh. do something else with it, right? Or you can go back to uh, YouTube and do whatever the fuck he wants with it. It's his show. Except he got 150 mil. Yeah, you know, we're not or, talking or about so. amounts here. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, you know. you know. Yeah, we're just talking about the efforts of making a licensing deal versus selling your intellectual yeah. property. So if you wanted to be maybe, um, if you wanted to gain value from me, whether you agree with my political views as to why did I vote for Trump. You could disagree with me politically, but you may gain something in value in terms of how did this, how did this Mexican-American kid who was new to stand-up license a stand-up special to Netflix with an expiration date so that he can go get paid from it again and again and again? How do you think all these people in Hollywood are paid? Because they own the master's. So if you own five Christmas movies, two Halloween movies, an Easter movie, like there's probably some old cats in Hollywood that just own a handful of holiday movies. Their family's going to eat year after year after year after year after year after year. And they're just licensing it to CB, whoever wants to play it. Um, They're probably not even Christian. And they're making money off Christmas. And then Mar- think about this, Mariah Carey, boy, she get paid every year around Christmas time because she wrote that song. Oh, it's my jam, dude. I still haven't gotten tired of it. <laughs> the Ohuva covers Mariah's next year's. See, yo no quiero nada, baby. Solo quiero nada, porque solamente quiero que. Okay, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a singer. Let me st- stick to politics, bro. Yeah, right. That'll be what somebody says in the future. Stick to politics, all right? You fucking dummies. Um, I, I mean, kind of to stick on on the same subject. Didn't what were we talking about? Something before we started recording about uh, the the online army of the left and the right. Oh yeah, basically, there's a dude named I think Don Winslow That's or Don Wilson, one of them. He's trending right now on Twitter because he came up with this cool little sizzle reel, a trailer. Where it's like, Trump may no longer be in office in January, by January 20th, but on January 21st, he will lead a new army. Even though he's not in charge of the armed forces, he now leads this army. And he shows like everybody out there having his back protesting the MAGA army. It's like, boy, you know, Trump going to be playing golf somewhere, (laughs) probably thinking about how he's going to bounce back. From losing so much money in four years, yeah. donating his salary, uh, anything associated with his family and his last name is banned everywhere. Uh, they've painted him, they, they smeared him as a racist, they impeached him twice. Um, that's probably what he's going to be doing. Probably trying to start a media company, maybe a tech app. I don't know what he's going to do. Probably play some golf. Um, shit, he's what, 74, 75 or something? Yeah, yeah I think 74. I mean... You know, people eat it up because they're they're paranoid. They're like, Trump and his people, they they they're evil. What is it? Seditionists and yeah, they're treasonous traitors and man, y'all lame, bro. <laughs> and, and excuse me for uh, using those terms because I know some people are gonna get offended and say this show is so one sided. <laughs> and don't worry, we'll have somebody on. But all we're trying to do is is show everybody the other side of the argument. Because nine times out of ten, most people just watching the narratives, you know, MSNBC, which is extreme left opinion. Most people watching CNN, which which takes the uh, uh, they take the trophy for the most hoaxes. Have you heard the debate where these people on CNN saying we need to figure out how to solve the OAN and the Newsmax problem, Bruh. But when I, I, I yes, I got here and I was like, damn, I didn't put that on what I wanted to talk about because I couldn't find the video either. But he was saying, uh, do you remember? You like, yeah. It, it, and guess what? The dude that was the guest with uh, Brian St- Steltzer, Seltzer, yeah. the guy that was the guest, he used to be in charge of a department in uh, Facebook that would have been in charge of kicking off child pornography off of their platform yet it still existed so number one you failed at keeping child freaking pornography off your goddamn facebook Mm. 
And now you on here on CNN preaching, saying we need to get rid of Newsmax and how the hell AT and T and all these cable companies are beaming, are beaming OAN and, and Newsmax to millions of homes, knowing that they've they've literally question the the validity of this year's uh you know the results of the E L E C T I O N mm-hmm. and uh, and I'm and I'm thinking to myself well you on a network that promoted the um uh, uh what's the uh Covington Russia. the Covington kids mm-hmm. Russia collusion then they changed Russia collusion to uh Russian interference they had to switch it because it was bullshit yeah and 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 so then they were like they tried to say that Trump was a Russian spy for four years that it was really Putin running America through through Trump he was just a puppet um, they were pushing uh, the I drink go ahead and drink some bleach hoax the fine people on both sides hoax hoax after I mean it's a laundry list of hoaxes that CNN next time we come on here I need to just have a list of whatever hoaxes Fox News promoted OAN Newsmax and then CNN. And then y'all tell me if we missed any, and then y'all tell me whose list was longer. Not to mention, not to mention that the hoaxes that CNN was pushing are what divided our country. They were pushing things like Trump called Nazis fine people, uh, Trump is anti-science, and so on. That's the type of shit they were pushing. It, it wasn't nothing in comparison. And that same guy was also saying that, like, basically, we need to cancel some of these conservative personalities that have a bigger platform and in the bigger day, reach than in daytime, CNN, CNN. daytime. Yeah. What the fu- and they're supposed to be the party of, like, you know, freedom, the, the party of, like, free and shit, right? No, I canceling and essentially, like you said earlier, taking food out of your children's and your family's mouth. Well, not only that, they want to silence people from the discussion. Like, anybody on the right... They don't want you in the discussion. And the stuff that we're saying, I mean, you know, you could beg to differ, but it's really not that if you, if you listen to what we talk about and what we say, we're pinpointing things, you know, some that we'll get to in a minute, that if you listen to what we're saying, it's not a stretch of the imagination. For example, what happened to defund the police? It was in the news every day. Now we don't see it. Why? What happened? Are they changing the narrative, or is it because their guy, their guy got elected already, and ain't no need to be riling people up no more? It's maybe uh, in four years. I don't know. Yeah, somebody. I was reading a thread about one one of these articles I was reading, and um, they were making a point that the Republicans or conservatives should find another approach to coming back in four years and not try to. It, it, let's just one not try to bring Trump back into the same train, and also leave the the MAGA in the past. Like if you try to revitalize. Make America Great Again in four years, it's going to be basically like played out and people aren't going to rally behind it the way they did the previous four years, which I found like that's an interesting point. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. what's the move, right? Like, who are we going to see, you know, rise through the ranks of the other side? Again, you don't even have to pick a side. We're not even picking that we're going to vote Republican or conservative oh, yeah. in four Cause years. Because if Tulsi Gabbard was on the ticket, I can't. T- I'm, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. I, I so ain't no telling. We got, and that's why following these people and policymakers and lawmakers is a is a good idea. I don't want to say consume your entire life with it, but it's not a bad idea to follow your policymakers and and to follow issues, especially locally. For example, we have um, Lena Hidalgo, which is Harris County County Judge or mm-hmm. some shit, and she be tweeting some stuff. She's like AOC. Of oh yeah, yeah, man. Damn, I need to follow. She, her. This is what she said, and this ought to hit home with you. She said. As Houston, Texas is the energy capital or whatever, like energy capital of America, we should also now lead the country in alternative energy sources. So basically, I guess she's throwing out this whole Green New Deal type thing. And I know she got cussed out in the comments because a lot of people work in oil and gas out here. Many for many, many generations. It's probably our biggest industry here. And she's basically shitting on it. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, fracking is what made the U.S. energy independent. Mm-hmm. We didn't have to rely on foreign oil. Which means we didn't have no wars for four years. A lot of people didn't like that here in the United States, as you could guess, corrupt politicians and such. But to, to be just a regular common folk, and, and there's there's a lot of books on a list that I know we've talked about, mm-hmm. and I know we'll get to, and we'll be able to, to chat about, you know, maybe on another segment or show that we do within the Patreon called like Chingo Chats or something, mm-hmm. where uh, there's this book, 
and I forgot the name of it, but it's in my phone, where it, it describes a lot of these industries that not a lot of people, especially I don't know about, I'm sure you don't know about, but like the energy industry and, and oil and the agriculture business and uh, all these other industries that are very important and the people that run it. And then you have the people that are in the public eye that just say shit like, like that, like, uh, we need to move away from this and, you know, cut the millions and billions of uh, dollars and jobs in that industry. Did you hear about that Keystone Act or whatever? Oh, cutting the Keystone Pipeline? Uh -huh. I didn't read it all, but... How did that go through already? Biden ain't... ain't I don't anymore. know. I just saw it and I was like, it's on my list to get to because I know a lot of people oil and gas, but I don't know what the justification for it was. Well, this oil and gas talk affects everybody, whether or not... Is that the Canadian pipeline? Yes. Okay. So this was a deal that I guess Trump put in place with Canada, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a, a contract, an arrangement with one of our neighbors that we do probably a lot of our business with right canada um this affects everybody because start paying attention to the price of gas here goes a picture of the gas on the north side this is off a of, uh, gulf bank at 45 it's at a uh, two dollars and three cents okay uh we shall see that's just regular right yeah yeah and then the diesel is two dollars 19 cents at this particular valero circle k Let's just keep an eye on that and, and see if everybody that voted for Biden is going to get a little bit of buyer's remorse. <laughs> but, you know, because this is going to be a fun four years. This going to be this podcast about to blow up because we're just going to give people buyer's remorse. And let me know when it kicks in. Is it six months from now? Is it two, <laughs> is it two years from now? Is it when it turns into the Harris administration? But you're going to get buyer's remorse. You're going to be like, damn, son, why did I mi listen to the narratives? So, by the way, this episode is going to be called Inauguration Eve because it, 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 we are. It's the 19th. Inauguration is tomorrow. Pardon Assange. Yeah, he needs to, right? He's pardoning, uh, par pardoning uh, probably over 100 people, I think I saw. Uh, Lil Wayne, including Lil Wayne. Nah. Yeah, they say, they say Lil Wayne's on there. I got the dude. I got one of the dude's numbers. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I don't know if you want to call him. No, we got to do it on Patreon because I got to okay, set something up. Okay, this for the up. patrons. Yeah, we, right. that's for the. We're gonna call the individual, and that's the cancel person. This right? is the person that tried to one of the people that called trying to cancel me from my events, considering I haven't been touring all year. So you are a hole and a half for trying to do that. Also, all because we disagree. Politically. Yeah. It, it, that's just as bad as political violence itself. Like the act of physical political violence, attacking somebody like that for political beliefs. We've already talked about it. But to, again, to stop you from not working and essentially the people that are running the clubs too. Does it, do you not think about that? Like the people that mm -hmm. run the clubs and have all the waitresses and bartenders and cooks and staff. What, 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 why? Why? Well, well, let me put it this way. Do you want to live in a country where your political enemies can keep you from participating in commerce. Ask yourself that. Do you want to live in an America where your political enemies are trying to get you from participating in commerce? They want to complain to Stripe, PayPal. They want to get you kicked off of every, any type of thing you do to sell merch or make money. Um, is that the kind of world you want to live in? Because, you know, there have been other groups in America that were not allowed to partici participate in com commerce. For example, women... For many years, we're not allowed to partake in certain jobs because they would tell them, ah, it's, we're, we're kind of holding those for dudes. Um, Japanese Americans around the Pearl Harbor incident uh, were rounded up here in America. These are Japanese Americans. Americans of Japanese descent were put in these camps and uh, not allowed to work. Uh, let's see who else. Um, Jews. Jews were allowed to live in countries but not allowed to participate in commerce. So think about that next time you try to cancel somebody in that fashion, you're kind of acting like a Nazi. Yeah, the people on the left will also say, and they've been saying that anybody that's worked for Trump, they basically don't want them to work. They, they, want, they want them canceled, obviously. They don't want them hired with any publications, with any news outlets, with any other uh, political administrations. And that if they do see these people on these platforms, they will immediately... Uh, cancel those subscriptions and uh, basically attack those ad advertisers. So the people that are advertising these shows and these commercials or whatever, no more, cancel them too. Like, ah, come on. And they hide behind, uh, what is it? Free market. They'll yeah. say, well, if a baker can deny a gay couple a cake, then we can, you know, boycott Goya. Or something lame like that. Boycott it. But the, the idea of going out there and actively mm -hmm. trying to get it off the shelf. Yeah. 
Yeah, corny, bro. <laughs> I have actually. I want to play this video real quick. The one we we're talking about just now of, uh, and this is where the new monitor is going to come in handy, Chingo. For sure. Yeah. Shout out to the patrons. Donald Trump will no longer be the commander in chief. He will lose control of the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Special Forces, and America's nuclear arsenal. On January 20th, Donald Trump will become the commander in chief of a different army. This army. And it's everybody in DC. The greatest threat facing America today comes from within. Radical extreme conservatives, also known as domestic terrorists. They are hidden among us, disguised behind regular jobs. They are your children's teachers. They work at supermarkets, malls, doctor's offices, and many are police officers and soldiers. For more than a decade... Bruh, the movie, this video is uh, like three, two and a half minutes long. Good job on this guy's production to just gather all these around, make that intense music under yeah, it. scare people. Yeah. Scare people. It, it reminds me of how, like, you know how people be like, you know, the Klan, the KKK, they was judges, and they were police officers, and, you know, they were hiding. That's why they would cover their face, because the Klan, they were right there. They were your neighbors. They were right there across the street. They were, they were right there, you know, working, mixed in. But at night, they go burn crosses and lynch people and, and cover their face. That's what that reminds me of. It's like, they are your kids' teachers. Uh, actually, I think most, like, arguably, none against, you know, let me not make a blanket statement. But you know how they were saying, man, they found a whole bunch of cops out there in D.C. Mm, surprise, surprise. It was a lot of police officers out there from across the country in D.C., you know, because we all know they're all racist. Everybody out there that's racist and all these cops are racist. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, if you're going to, you know, be mad at some cops for being in D.C. Uh, protesting what they feel was a, a stolen vote. Um, let me say that as carefully as I can because we will get kicked the fuck off. Uh, <laughs> well, don't you think it would be unfair to say to go looking for how many teachers... We're in the Antifa BLM burnings. Right. Because I guarantee you it was some teachers oh, out there. Oh, 100%. I guarantee you it was some public school teachers out there. And no offense, because I know a lot of public school teachers. And, uh, you know, I think for the most part, they're doing a great job. But it's not fair to be like, aha, smoking gun. There are cops. There are cops out there, which we've already been told by the news. They're all bad people. They're all racist, and we need to defund them. And we've already been told by the news that all them people that were gathered in D.C. Uh, showing support to Trump uh, are also racist, white, supremacist, domestic terrorists. And you brought this up, too, just a while ago about the uh, National Guard, like Biden vetting our National Guard. And they've had, this was like two hours ago, two National Guard members removed from Biden's inauguration for having supposed ties to fringe right group militias. Yeah. Trump was never afraid of his troops. And there was another correspondent on, I think it was CNN probably, uh, saying how we should keep a really close eye on our troops because I think they did a, I don't know, some sort of study or, or gathered some information that about 75 plus percent of the National Guard had voted for, for Trump and, you know, the remaining whatever, 25, 30 percent voted for Biden and the, the, the ratio outweighed the potential of anything occurring because they might have sympathy for Trump or whatever the fuck. It's like... I don't know that you really want to paint our troops in those types of lights. Basically, bro, Biden hasn't even been inaugurated yet, and he's already fucking up. And also already lying, because if we all remember, and I kind of put it on that list briefly, where when he was doing his speech, the, basically like the last speech. His divisive that, speech saying, er, he called Nazis fine people. <laughs> well, he says, I feel like and he said nobody, that. And didn't nobody fact check him. I feel like he says that, he said that frequently, but in reference to lying, I wanted to bring up the fact that the Georgia Senate race, runoff race, he said, if you if you vote for, for them, you know, for these Democrats, $2,000 checks will go out the door the very first day. Which we're finding out are fourteen hundred dollar checks, which is not what he said. So it's a, it's a combined with the six hundred that have gone out two thousand. So already, and people on Twitter are roasting a lot of these people that are like, uh, fourteen grand, fourteen hundred ain't two k, Joe. You know, and he's not even in office yet. So he, he, here's here's my thoughts on um, the whole National Guard vetting situation. So Trump never had to protect himself from American troops. He never had to. He, when did Trump, can you imagine if Trump had said, "Nah, cuh, I need to see how many of these Air Force Navy people voted for me because I want a loyalist army." Can you imagine what the media would have done if Trump was the one that said, "Hey, man, I only want Secret Services down with me, homie. 
they would have fucking lit his ass up. So in essence, Biden is afraid of his own troops. Let that sink in. Um, so the dangers of all this is that maybe not this administration, but maybe if this trend continues divisively like this, maybe down the road, you might get a bad elected official who really amplifies that and wants a loyalist army. So like, for example, when Castro took over Cuba, he didn't have to do that because he brought in his own loyalist army. He, he came in with troops saying, all these fools are down for me. So is that what we want? <laughs> is that not going to divide us further, you know, further? Yeah. I never thought, uh, uh, Joseph was here yesterday. He just turned 25. We met him when he was like 18 or something, right? So I'm like, damn, Joe, 25, you damn near 30, huh? <laughs> and I told him, I was like, bro, when we first met you, you were fresh out of high school, 18 years old. I never would have thought that we'd be sitting here having a conversation about, are we on the brink of civil war? Mm -hmm. Like, how divided are we? Is it really just hysteria? Is it just the media fanning flames of division? Boy, things escalate quickly, boy. Yeah, when, it makes when you think. got when you got the propaganda machine. Uh, speaking of propaganda, we saw um, a little documentary interview on Valuetainment. You heard of him? No. Oh yeah, yeah, the guy with the suit. He's like a, a yeah Persian cat. Yeah. Um, so he interviewed a young lady who escaped North Korea, and when I tell you, you must watch this because she exposes the the level of propaganda and brainwashing. Obviously. Every country has their fair share of propaganda, but it's trippy to see it, you know, from an outsider perspective, because it's hard to see it when you're in it. Like, oh, no, that's just CNN. It's, <laughs> it's news. That's CNN. That's news. Oh, my God. That is CNN, and it is news. Did you get injected with Novocaine? What's going yeah. on over here? That is CNN, <laughs> and that is news. So uh, this young lady was talking about how they don't play with Barbies and, and stuff like that. They play with tanks. Um, they're just being socialized when they do like little games and puzzles or, or math problems. It's like how many American bastards are left to kill after you subtract, you know, it'll be like five American bastards minus three American bastards. How many left to kill? They're like two American bastards. Um, how they're not allowed. They will get, they will get killed publicly. They will do a public execution. If you are watching a film from the free world. Mm -hmm. So she said she risked her life watching Titanic in secret. What? Yes. If you're caught reading the Bible, that's your ass. Um, and even kids are forced to attend public execution. So you seeing somebody getting the, brain, the brains blown out. Um, it, it's fascinating, man. Just the level of propaganda. Um, you know, you don't really know it when you're in it, but they pretty much have them like prisoners. Um, they're like starving to death. And, you know, a, a hungry citizen is an obedient citizen. That video that you're referencing, I, I want to make sure that I get the link for me later. Maybe mm -hmm. jot it down on your paper there. And there's another one that I had a couple people actually send to me. And I don't remember why they sent it to me or what got on this uh, on this uh, fucking conversation. Mm -hmm. But it was a Holocaust survivor mm. who made this pretty interesting speech. Uh, this was like probably, this was in the middle of the Obama administration, I want to say. Uh, but it was f -f fascinating. And I'm trying to find her name and I'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. and maybe post it in the stories on the uh, podcast page or something. But... It's uh, it's crazy to think, like you said, in just those five years, like for instance, from Joseph being eighteen to twenty-five, it's like, well, we live in a radically different world, mm -hmm. just wherever. And I kind of, I, I blame the media. It's a hundred percent gotta be. I say a hundred percent, but yeah, it's a hundred percent. I was gonna say like ninety-nine, but now it's a hundred percent the media's fault because we have. I mean, I don't want to put all the blame on them. I'm just saying that's a big chunk because if you really sit and think about it, it's like we we have more in common then we have differences. Yeah. You know, so a lot of people that can't stand me right now, it's because they can't stand Trump. They literally see him as orange man, bad Hitler, Satan. How dare you wear an orange shirt? Right? I wore it just for Trump because I'm a loyalist. <laughs> That's stupid. Put me on a list, Shea Serrano. So stupid. Um, you know you know who else made lists? <laughs> you acting like McCarthy, bro. Um, so we have more in common. We have more in common. Like, do you want safe neighborhoods for your kids? You know, do you want opportunity and education for your kids? Do you do you love your country? I'm, I'm assuming most of them do, uh, even though some think it's inherently evil. 
it needs to be destroyed and, and started anew and built back better. I'm interesting, and this is what I was going to say a second ago, how Biden... So let me ask you this first. Let's make some hypo, some guesses here. Mm-hmm. How long does Biden go into his administration? How long does he Ooh, stay as president? Six guessing. months, a year, two years? <sighs> Man, how old is he? I'll pull it up if this Wi-Fi fucking works, Uh-oh. but uh, I'm going to guess 78. Man, somebody... Fa- See, that's the type of shit y'all can fact check us on. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> how old? Tell me if it works. If not, it's it's circling. How old? It ain't even cold outside today. Oh, you know what's trippy hmm. is um, seventy eight. Nailed it. Nineteen forty two. Seventy eight. What's boy. trippy? A couple things. Okay. So I was on Instagram and I was about to leave, leave a comment. Right, I was replying to somebody and I put I voted for, and it said, you know how it auto populates yes. with your text. It said the President Joe Biden. Wow. And I was like, no, that's not what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I voted for Trump because I thought he was the lesser of two evils. And it kept wanting to put How the funny. President Joe Biden. Shout and, out and, IG. And Google, that's why we recommend DuckDuckGo.com. Because Google keeps track of every keystroke you make on their website. Um, they sell your data. You know, you, 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 you might be watching the Jenny Rivera <laughs> novella on Netflix. Next thing you know, it's popping up on your YouTube. So somebody's selling your data. So, what, what were we? Well, I was I was trying to bring... I think the, the lady's name was... Oh, uh, we were placing bets. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. We were, uh, we were betting 78. Oh, I love Man. How aggressive and how soon do they want to hit him with that 25th Amendment and put Harris in there? I don't know how they're going to try to take him out. Is it 25th Amendment? I don't know. Does he just resign? Does he just step down? You know, who, yeah. who knows how it happens? But I'm just curious to think, yeah. and listeners chime in when you hear this. Let us know on Instagram uh, what you think. But what do you personally I mean, think right playing now? Playing it safe is, a, is probably saying something like two years is playing it safe. But, uh, man, bro. Maybe I'm, I'm a pers- year? Okay, yeah, I personally was going to say, I think 2021 is going to take a toll on this old man. And, uh, you know, trying to clean up the mess that Trump left behind kind of Blame it all on Trump. Blame it all on Trump. Get him out the door. But in that time, whether it's six months to a year, two years, whatever, it'll be interesting to see what kind of uh, legislation this old man does indeed pass and what he ignores and see what his constituents... Or what he undoes. What he undoes or what he, you know, changes and just see how it lines up with what the people thought they were going to get, right? Kind of like said buyer's remorse. Yeah. For example, buyer's remorse is is your is your uh, price at the pump going to go up? Uh, is there going to be more war in these next 4 years? Um shit that maybe you didn't factor in. Are we going to find out what happened to Hunter's laptop? <sighs> Man, I don't know. And are they going to impeach some of these people because the same standard that they're using against Trump saying you incited these people. Okay, cool. Let's I right, bet. That's what's up. He incited. Now can we retroactively say Kamala by bailing people out, uh, AOC by telling people how to protest, saying don't wear jewelry in case you get arrested, uh, wear your mask so they don't s- scan your face and all this type of shit. Did y'all incite all these politicians that were like, we need to burn shit down and y'all need to protest, hit the streets, hit people in the face, make them uncomfortable. Did y'all incite? Because y'all were li- If Trump has said all this stuff that Maxine Waters and and uh, all these different Democrat politicians have said, man, can you imagine? Because all he said was, we need to fight for our country. We need to go down there we and march peacefully and, and, and take our country back or we won't have a country left and stuff like that. Okay, if that's inciting language, what about this dude that they found that was a radical leftist that was trying to assassinate MAGA people in D.C.? Who incited him? Did he incite himself? Oh, he incited himself. He didn't, he didn't he didn't get it from CNN and all these politicians. Yeah, double uh, standard. I uh, <laughs> I switch between when I do watch TV TV, which isn't very often, uh, especially news stuff on TV. I do try to switch between you know Fox and CNN specifically, and then Newsmax. I'll kind of catch on. Or if you want to go extreme, MSNBC. Yeah, I'll, I'll catch clips of other stuff on YouTube. But um, t- I, how long do you, if you ever watch Don Lemon and Cuomo? <laughs> how long can you can you take of them on TV before you got to go? punch a punching bag <laughs> don't stoop down to their level chingo when until they you go have low to, we kick them we kick them until you have to just change the channel or put fucking baby shark on because that's more entertaining honestly man i really can't stand them so i really just see 
little clips on Twitter, like okay. short yeah. things of like, look at what these assholes said. I, and I always think too, is like, he's talking to like Don Lemon's talking to a white Italian guy. Right. And there, he's telling him all these things about how bad white people are. And he just has to sit there and then kind of take it. And then also agree with him. Well, first of all, how many of these people got white, um, husbands and wives? Well, he goes back to a home to a white husband, doesn't he? So ain't Don Lemon married to a white yeah. boy? Come on, Don. Damn, that's so crazy. Don Lemonade. Don Lemon. Don Lemon. Don Mamon. And then you got like like Kamala basically, I feel, falls into that same rhetoric of like white man bad. Every it's a white man's world and it's a white man white man America's evil because the white man made it that way and blah 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 blah. She married to a white man. What are we gonna do about him? Yeah, she has like a whole multiracial family, doesn't she? Indian, Jamaican, white. Yeah. I don't know if she has kids or has adopted kids or some shit, but which which we'll be diving deep into Kamala Harris in the future and about her past as this podcast goes on. And hopefully we still have a platform when we do that. Yeah. Um, that, that video, by the way, for listeners is uh, Kitty Worth, Worthman, and I'll post this on the podcast page too. It's just a video about her uh, accounts of when Hitler took over Austria. It's a fascinating speech. Fascinating mm-hmm, speech. Mm-hmm. This was like probably 15 or 10, like I said, Obama-ish time. But mm-hmm. she made a DVD and at the end of it, she's like, I urge you to get the DVD. How funny, right? Where the fuck are we going to play a DVD? Mm-hmm. But you could probably find it somewhere and play it. And it, it's, I don't know how reliable Snopes is anymore these days, yeah. but it says that it's unproven. So it didn't say it was false. So what was she saying? that The way Hitler took over Austria? Yeah, it was um, it basically she... It, he was voted in unanimously by 98% of the vote and then goes down the accounts of how the voting process took place and what was promised to the people and what started happening and what happened to schools and what happened to it, it's fascinating when you go when when we switch places uh-huh. here with my soul i'll send you the link so you can watch it and then after we finish i'd love to get your opinion on it because it's like 20 minutes it's a it's worth every every second of this lady's speech but um mm. it was mind-blowing the people that sent it to me I was like, wow, thank you for sending that. I, I, I guess because we started talking more about Biden's inauguration and then other people were sending me. So so are you saying there's parallels between Biden and... Yeah, and that's, really? that's why they were sending it to me. And, and, and more and more people, and you're seeing this, like more and more people are talking about could, you know, the United States ever fall victim to, you know, Nazism again or to a complete socialist dictator, blah, blah, blah. All these kind of weird articles that people are choosing to write and even some from publications that are, have a large following. It's like, well, okay, whatever. You know what that reminds me of? Last night at the kids' birthday party, super Mexican birthday party, like Morale. probably only me and Marisol spoke English. Nice, yeah, that was it. Not even Penny. Sounds like a good time. Yeah, <laughs> not, not even, even Penny. Penny speaks English. So we're so I'm over there. We, you know where the men at? We ordered drinking beer, and we um you know he was homeboy was cooking up some of these cada, and he had some tortillas and everything going, pot of beans, and everybody's drinking and chit chatting. Bro, when I tell you, when the conversation shifted to politics, it got very fascinating very interesting like mm. these dudes were up on game what maybe there was one cat that maybe was just not really sold and maybe there were a handful of dudes that weren't really paying attention to everything but there was at least three that were like one was extremely educated he was just like you know he talking about venezuela russia cuba um you know just trump everything and uh, the other guy the guy that was cooking he was talking about it just from layman's terms he's like hey he's like well, what's going on he's like man the gas price of gas is going up and just things that he can observe um and then other people are like well why did you know it wasn't right that they stormed the Capitol?" or like when they talk about george floyd it's like nah man that cop man he was out of line bro and it's like okay well true but don't be surprised if they just hit him on the wrist because of body cam footage Witness testimony, autopsy, uh, toxicology report, three times the amount, fentanyl, suicide levels. Um, he was complaining he couldn't breathe an hour before the cops even showed up. Right. So on and so forth. Um, but it got fascinating. Were man. these older guys or were they pretty young? Uh, some, some are younger than me. And uh, the gentleman that like really knew a lot of specific details, and I'm, I was curious where he was getting like all his info, he was older than me. But he, he, at the end, he's like, hey, man, you know, oh, yeah, como te llamas? And he's like, estás el tiro, eh? Like, like, you know your shit. So it was fascinating. I've never been to a carne asada where it was just kind of like, no, es que ya ves lo que va a pasar con la guerra. Y, you know, es el Keystone. No, güey, el Keystone ya lo, deshac- ya lo deshacieron, güey. El contrato con Canadá, güey. <laughs> e- y ya vienen las caravanas. Ya vienen las caravanas. ¿Qué va a hacer Joe Biden? They were talking about immigration reform. It was fascinating because these are all things that, 
are going to affect their lives. A lot of them were like, we're one of the 11 million that Biden is promising to um, give uh, amnesty to. And, you know, what's going to happen with this? What's going to happen with that? And it was fascinating, bro. My that's, mind was blown. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's fun when you can have a conversation with that with somebody that's kind of like, you didn't think that that's where it would go. You're like, oh, cool. This is going to mm-hmm. be fun. Open-minded, I would guess. Yeah. Um, I'm, I want to pull up a little bit of this video just because it's oh, the, so the Jewish lady? Yeah, it's just like the first couple seconds or so because we're cutting it short on time. This podcast is going to be exactly at an hour just because Soul's got a guest at two. Her Lounge Podcast. Her Lounge Podcast, which we were, you and I were basically her guest last week mm-hmm. um, talking about marriage and parenting. Uh, was there any other tidbits here that weren't too long that you wanted to touch on before we get to our Patreon episode next next couple days? Okay, so a couple quick things. I'll just read the list and then you'll be like, yo on that so obviously we have um the caravans are coming let's see what biden does oh did you see those videos by the way it was a huge ocean of people headed to the border and unfortunately i don't know what's gonna happen i think the mexican government is volunteering like well we're gonna put some troops to help y'all out i don't know um obviously pardon assange everybody from even pamela anderson is uh, lobbying for him Mm. she went on tucker carlson a couple people have gone on Tucker Carlson basically saying Trump, this could be part of Trump's legacy. Like it can help protect free speech. Um, obviously, Julian Assange is the WikiLeaks guy who released Hillary's emails right before the last election. He's going to wait till he's going to wait till 1130 tomorrow morning and do it. <laughs> is that his last little thing? And noon. Noon is when it's done. He's out of office. Well, Trump is a showman and he knows how to he knows how to. Um, harness energy and kind of like work the media yeah so hey i wouldn't doubt it uh supposedly a hope like fifty thousand italian restaurant owners protested the italian government lockdown shutdown where they said look you can't arrest us all you know you can't arrest all of us and um they opened up and cops were having to go in and they, they were just yelling freedom 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 in italian damn mm, take note americans <laughs> italian still got balls uh, Nancy Pelosi put, what's his name? Eric Swalwell. Yeah. The dude that was sleeping with the Chinese spy. Fang, there's fang. A, there's a lot of them. Fang, 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 fang. <laughs> and um, he's back on some intelligence committee. So he's getting scoop and info and he's giving it to Fang, fang. Who's giving it to the CCCP. What is it? CCP? Yeah. Um, Project Veritas and uh, what's his name? James O'Keefe. Yeah. Is still letting Twitter have it because he has inside scoop. He got people. That's blowing a whistle on big tech. And they're getting little clips that are kind of out of context, but it's very telling about the stance that Twitter's taking and how the censorship is only going to get a little bit worse. Yeah, I hope that the videos that they have continues to maybe find that real hardcore, like this, like, aha, like this is exactly what we were talking about. Because the videos that they do have, like you said, they're kind of, maybe they're taking out of context a little bit, but you can. You can put the idea together. It's almost like they know, like, this is potentially going to happen. People are going to record this and put it out there. So let's try not to, like, bury ourselves while everybody's remote. Like, they can't be that stupid where they would let everything out on a Zoom call versus, like, their boardroom, for instance, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So now going forward, unless they have some really hardcore, hardcore evidence, it's going to continue to be more of, like, okay, we're just going to have these, like, really short five-minute, like, you know, meetings where it's not going to be that invasive about what we talk about and then move on until we can gather So they're having a tap dance a little bit? Yeah, I mean, which is what they're doing. it's like because it'd be like five thousand people on him a Zoom call. Yeah, you shit. can still decipher what he's saying. Jack Dorsey and uh, Vidya, the late. Did you ever listen to him and her on Rogan? No. This is from like two or three years ago. It was him and it was him, and then it was him, her, and Tim Pool. You never heard that episode? No, I need to go. Oh, bro, this is way back in the archive. I'll have to find the number for you. But it was great, and Tim Pool was letting them have it. And you can go back and it's still, I, I encourage you to do it if you never saw it, and see how they have to to just skirt skirt you know tim pool's questions and you know all the things that he's bring all the points he's bringing up and it's like all right here I mean, we and here we are two three years later yeah and big tech they're in a precar- precarious position you know jack dorsey is that obviously a smart fucking dude um i don't really believe he's a inherently evil person but twitter is such a big part of our society and a big part of Silicon Valley, and they got a shit ton of power. They're damn near a monopoly. And it gets a little tricky, man, when you get weirdos and Nazis and shit on your fucking platform. You got to kick them off. Um, However, I know the right is kind of like, man, you got these extreme leftists on there, and you're not kicking 
it's like you got like Iranian uh, people that are on some death to America type shit. Their tweets stay up. Uh, the CCP got their shit promoting how they treat their uh, Uyghurs fine. Yeah, you know they're 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 reeducated now. Okay, uh, Home Alone two, inc- including Macaulay Culkin, and I think even SAG the. Uh, Actor, Screenwriters Guild. Yeah, I think the or, Actors Guild has something yeah. to do with it. But basically, they're trying to digitally edit Donald Trump out of his little fucking five second cameo of Home Alone Two. <laughs> did, did you see the clip somebody posted where somebody had Biden? Already, yeah, he's like, "Shouldn't send a shot at a pressure." He's like, "Thanks." Sure, shot of a transverter refresher. I'm gonna make sure to turn over showers and refresher. I mean. Damn, y'all hate what did Trump do exactly? That y'all gotta go back in time and cut out his cameo? What was it? Which one was it? What what was the reason? And was it based on a hoax? You know what I'm saying? You can't just say, well, CNN called him a white supremacist racist, therefore, or he told the Proud Boys stand stand down, stand by. Therefore, we gotta take him off. What was it? Because I know it wasn't the uh, Charlottesville Nazi thing, because that was fake. Uh on that note. Um, weird times weird times let me see if this first 60 seconds or so is worth playing for everybody the fact is that the austrian people elected hitler by 98 percent of the vote by means of the ballot box now how could that happen in a christian nation almost 100 percent catholic that they would elect a monster like Hitler. Hitler did not look like a monster. He did not act like a monster. He talked like an American politician. (laughs) Okay, it's fascinating. It's 33 minutes, guys. It's called uh, Holocaust Survivor Kitty Worthman's Entire Speech. And it'll it'll really blow your fucking mind. So, um... We, we got to get going because my soul's got a guest okay. coming in. I don't want our guest to get up there and she's up there by herself. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we got Patreon coming up and we have some uh, new extra content that's going to mm-hmm. be available to patrons in the future, right? Yes, yes, that is correct. Uh, a lot of bonus, good, good goodies. And uh, I got to make sure that I log on to the Patreon app from my phone so I could just be... Um, so you're not at your desktop having to do it? You can do yeah, it on the fly? Yeah, that way I can even show a lot more behind the scenes and stuff like that. And then in terms of the Freedom of Speech tour, we're coming to Florida, of course, because they're wide open. Hello. Shout out to Governor DeSantis. It is a red state. Uh, we're hitting Naples, Florida at Off the Hook Comedy Club, February 10th. And then we shoot on over to West Palm Beach. You know what I'm talking about? Over there by Mar-a-Lago. Uh, we hit the West Palm Beach Improv, February 11th. Tickets on chingobling.com. Now, we have a Chingo treasure trove. If, if you're watching us right now on YouTube or, or anywhere on the Patreon app, this is a Chingo Bling snack box. It's got some goodies. I'm just going to give you a sneak peek right now. We're only going to make 100, and there's only 100 of these made. Limited edition cereal, Chingo de Churros. Chingo de Churros, nutritional value on the side. It got a puzzle right here. You know what I'm saying? My handsome little face right here, you know what I'm talking about? And there's a bonus. Okay, not only do you get the cereal in there, dun dun dun, but you also get a little prize inside. You know what I'm talking about? Versace Mariachi. And it's gonna have a whole lot more goodies in here from other vendors and, and like little samples from different folks that we work with. That's cool. I hadn't seen that yet. It's gonna be interesting. Only a hundred. Uh, we'll probably get the patrons first dibs, but um, yeah, we're going to do a, it's not a subscription box. It's not a monthly thing. We just kind of want to do one and maybe periodically, maybe every quarter put out a, a little treasure trove, treasure chest. Sepa, no sabemos. Cool. But uh, talk to you soon, man. I had fun this episode. Hell and yeah. um, Let's just keep the conversation robust. Keep an open mind. We are America. We have to stay united. We can't have two internets you know what i'm saying it can't be everybody from the right getting kicked off of everything and then people conservatives having to build their own fucking platform so they can sell merch and 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 have a conversation that's not the direction i feel the country needs to go in Uh, mexicans trying to cancel mexicans that's corny uh, but if you're enjoying the show, please tell a friend and let us know. Leave a review in the in the Apple, uh, what do you call it? Apple Podcast. Yeah. Leave a comment, mm-hmm. and we will be here, man. As long as y'all want us to be here. Thank you. Peace.